you were gonna skip this right now, we're gonna skip this right now, we're gonna skip this right now, and I brought them back now. There are so far, because there is another part of the quadratic unit once we get back. There was no way I was having you do that by yourself. There are basically two things that we learned how to do in that quadratic unit. We learned how to complete the square. Right. Supposed we were to. supposed to learn how to come. You are supposed to be able to complete the square, which gives you the turning point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing that you were supposed to get from that last unit was how to solve it, which is when we did the the T chart and the equal zero part, right? Okay. Also called zeros. There was another word. X intercepts. Yeah, solve is there already. Find the answer. Okay. Yeah, find the answer. So the word problems are also going to fall into those two categories. It's just a matter of, okay, what are they really asking me? And where can I get that piece of information? Can I get that from the turning point? Or do I need to know where it touches the, the x-axis? Because that's essentially what that is. All right, so an object traveling under an acceleration due to gravity alone will have a height h in meters above the ground t seconds after it was fired given by... Are we enjoying this so far? No. <laughs> okay. What is that really? I don't understand a word you just said, so it's fine. It doesn't really matter. It comes down to the formula. It's a question. What is that formula really? A math formula. What's it look like? Does it look like it this like or does it look like completing this? Completing the square. It looks like completing the square. So what information are we probably supposed to get from there? We're supposed to We're probably supposed to find the turning point. Okay. So the one thing we do need to know, what does H stand for? Zero. H is height. And what does T stand for? Time. Seconds, which is time. Okay. At which height, so what do we want? We want the H. Does the object begin at T equals zero? Yeah. So plug zero in. So either plug zero in, make your calculator do it. Oh, I don't. now honestly, I don't like these. No, no. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this into your y equals screen. Put that into your y equals screen. And then just go to the table where it says Go zero. to the table where it's zero. Matthew's looking for his graph. Boy, I know it is right next to the remote. <laughs> the TV remote you bought the one day. He just pulls out his backpack. That's where this went. Looking for where y equals zero. You got it. No, not y. No, no, X. X. Because T, T is where your X would normally be. Yeah. What is it? 33.6. 33.6 what? Since it's at what height? Feet. No, it's not feet. Meters. Meters. Remember when we get yelled at if we said point? Um, yeah. show work that supports your answer. 33 and 60. You can. Yeah. You can just show them that what you could have done was this. Okay. Or you can just copy for them a couple of the points from the table. Okay. Either of those are fine. Honestly, the Regents is pretty good about not asking you to show work on things that you can do on your table. Yeah. What is the peak height? This object reaches in meters. Okay, peak height. What does that mean? Maximum. Maximum or minimum. Where do you get the maximum or the minimum? You can. Turning point. But you don't have to because it comes from the turning point. What is the turning point for this problem, you guys? Well, what is the turning point itself? Six. Six to 10 is the turning point right from here. I don't even need the table, right? Now let's answer the question. What is the peak height? Well, which of these two numbers is the height? 210. So I'd say height is 210 meters. When does it reach this height in seconds? Yeah. Time equals six seconds. 
anything there you couldn't have done on your own? No, it was actually very easy, wasn't it? It's yeah. just a matter of understanding what the heck it is asking you. Okay. Although you should be able to answer Part B without your calculator, provide evidence in a table form that supports your answer from B. Can we skip that? Yes, yes please. Okay. Using your calculator, sketch a graph of the height over the interval shown. Label your answer from A and B. I do want to do this just so we can play with the window ranges again. The more comfortable I can get you with getting the window ranges where you need them to be, the better off we'll be in the end. So go to your window. What, dear? Well, I have it if you don't put them right there. No, and you'll get the question. Your, your picture won't, will be off. A little bit. Mm -hmm. It depends on how far off your window range is. Okay, is everybody on your window button? No. Yeah. Get on your window button. All right, X min, what do you want to use according to this? Negative 50. Actually, negative 50 is this guy. I would I just use kidding. zero. I would just use zero. Yeah. What are you going to use for your maximum for X? That's your Y. 15. What do you want it to count by? You can count by ones. If you count by threes or something like that, or fives, you might be able to kind of estimate a little bit better. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see intervals of one, but it's, you know, what you want to do. All right, what about my y-axis? What's my y-min? Negative 50. There's my negative 50. What's my y-max? 250. 250. What do you want to count by? You do not want to count by one. 25. 25. 25. 25. I, would I, say almost, I almost would 25. count by 50s. Yeah. 50s. I would almost count by 50s because that's one, two, and then there's five of them. That's seven increments. You, yeah. you probably can do a pretty good judge, judgment from there. Yeah. This is a Kirk thing. This is not a Regents thing. Yeah. Yeah, just graph it. What do you need, man? Is the graded power tool or test? No. We can no, finish no, them until today. You're the only one who finished it before today. Well, I mean, wow, the purple. Good. We all had it finished. We were you had to stay half. We're going to move along. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I need somebody's graph so I know what this looks like. Look at this photograph. So light. Yeah. 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 So like this ish? Yes. Ish? Yeah, yeah about. Yeah, about. Again, this is not something the regents will ask you to do. This is just Kirk. The regents might ask you to graph it exactly, but he's not going to, they're not going to ask you to sketch it like that. You can change your window back. Oh, you don't like that, huh? You know, you can change your window back if you'd like. Okay, are we good with number what? Sure. Okay. I guess. Sure. I guess. All right. So let's look at number two and see what it wants us to do. Baking soda rocket is a baking soda, baking soda rocket. rocket is fired upwards with an initial speed of 80 feet per second. So they do this a lot and they do it on the regions too. They'll explain to you what the equation is and then they turn around and give you the equation. Basically, the only thing you need from there is you need to understand the variables. What are the variables? What are they measuring? So H of T is really height, height given time. And the T stands for time, which is measured in seconds. What's the height measured in this time? Height. How did you know that? Because it says feet. feet per second. Right there. Okay. T is the time in seconds. At what time, when time is greater than zero, so you cannot say zero, does the rocket hit the ground? Do we want the turning point this time? No. No. We don't care how high the rocket goes. That would be a how high is the rocket question. If we want it to hit the ground, what do we want it to do? Go to zero. We want it to be zero because the ground is. Okay. So. Zero what if the ground hits down? The, then there's, well, it will after the rocket hits it. Um, well, I mean, this is just a. a so, rocket. step number one, we want it to equal zero. So that's what we're going to do. We want that to equal zero. We want it to hit the ground. Okay. You have four choices for factoring. GCF, unfoil, slip and slide, conjugate pairs. What is this? Uh, GCF. Factor. This is GCF, GCF. right? Greatest common factor. What do you suggest we take out as our factor? 16. I would take 16. 16. 
16 will go into 80 evenly. T. And I would also take out a T. And I'm mm -hmm. going to be a pain in the butt, and I'm going to take out a negative 16 T. Ooh. I know, okay. right? So, so, so GCF is negative 16 T. So then I'm going to go through, and I'm going to take it out of everything. Why do you want to take out? What? I'm being weird. Okay, good to know. All right, when I take a negative 16t out of negative 16t squared, what am I left with? T. T. When I take a negative 16 out of 80, what am I left with? Negative 5. And when I take a t out of t? They can't. So it's just t minus 5. So it's t minus 5. Okay, what do I do now? Minus five minutes. <laughs> nope, I don't have to do that. You distribute. Nope, I just undistributed. I'm not going to go back and distribute. Nope. Teacher. Why? T. T chart. So when I do my T chart, what that says to me is one of these two sides has to be zero. We got to figure out which number makes both of the sides zero because we don't know which one it is that equals zero. So we have to figure it out. So we have negative 16t equals zero. How do I get that t by itself? Divide it by negative 16, which means it, it is zero. Except look at our directions. At what time? When time is greater than zero. So what they're acknowledging right there is that the rocket started on the ground. That's what they're saying. Over here, what if it's t minus 5 that equals 0? Then t is yes, right. 5. Right. So my answer, at what time does the rocket hit the ground? 5 seconds. 5 seconds. So I do all of this work, and then I come over here and I say 5 seconds. Don't, I'm going to start telling you this now. For years and years and years, your math teachers have already always told you to box in your answer, circle your answers. Don't, I, I want you to start breaking yourself with that habit right now. It's, it's this really, really weird thing. The minute you box that in, I have to call it the answer. If you don't box it in, and that's not right, but this over here is, I can still give you full credit. It's weird, I know. But don't box in your answers. Yes, dear. Why not? They teach us all these things for this to yeah, go yeah, out the window. Like we always say, like circle your answer so they know what it is. Or like I said, like we always had to well, say, you can never say like point. So it's it like, us being tricky ways of getting you points. That's what it is. But it's they change but like, things like X is times. I know. That's because you get older. So the older you get, we should be able. We just <laughs> talked about this with the math eight kids because the math eight kids are just starting to talk about domain and range right now. Oh, just starting to talk about talking it. Talking about Wait, lucky, why lucky. is it that we have to call domain Not and good. range instead of just calling them x numbers and y numbers? Why is it that we use the word sum? We used to have to say three point one four as three and fourteen one hundredths. Okay, well, yeah, and then they were like, and then they would be like. Well, when you're an older in middle school and high school, they're not going to let you say point, and so you have to say it this way. No, we literally just say point. You say point, just like okay. Three, three and fourteen. One Look at number. Focus. Yeah. Remember, because you don't want to have to do something on Thursday. So focus. Okay. Focus. The vertical height of a projectile above ground level can be modeled by the equation in the form. Okay, so what's it look like to you? It looks like. Um, it looks like Looks not fun. Which one does it look like to you? Yes. Yeah. It's general. They don't have information plugged in yet, but it's a general equation. Okay. H sub max is the maximum height in feet. So H means height in feet. And T max is the time in seconds when it occurs. Okay. A given projectile, projectile has a height function given by h of t equals negative 16 times t minus 8 squared plus 156. What is its maximum height? And at what time t does it occur? Do we have to do anything? Yes. We do? What do we have to do? No. We don't have to do anything. What are they asking you? Yes. They're asking you your turning point. What is its maximum height, you guys? 156. 156 what? Feet. feet happens at eight. Eight. 
that comes just from knowing your vertex can be pulled. Your turning point can be pulled from the equation that way. Are there other ways around it? Absolutely. You get stuck. You get freaked out on the regions. You put this into your calculator and you go use your table, just like Leo was telling us a couple minutes ago. What if I forgot to calculate? But what you won't, because I will have your calculator. That's a whole nother story. Oh, what? Let it be. A projectile has a height function of h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 160 t plus 120. Write this in the form shown above, vertex form. Okay, what do they want me to do? What equals zero? Nope. Well, partially, but why? Write the line to zero, that's form. Write it in vertex form. What does that mean, you guys? Oh, yeah. it make it like it is complete the square. Oh, it means make complete it the square. square. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to complete the square with it. Okay. So negative 16 t squared plus 160 t plus 120 equals Leo's zero. Minus 120. Why am I doing that again? Yeah, so we have space for the new c value, which we're going to force so that it is a... Perfect square trinomial. Yes? Okay, now talk to me about the A and the B, the, the coefficients in front of T squared and T. Talk to me about negative 16 and 160. Yeah, there's a GCF in there. What am I taking out of negative 16? 16. I'm, in fact, I'm going to take negative. So I'm going to take a negative 16 out, which is going to leave me with T squared minus 10. 10T. Okay. Now, what am I ready to do? Divide 10 by 2. Take 10. So it's 25. Divide it by 2. It's 5. And then square it. 5 squared is 25. Now, this is a mistake that a lot of you were making on that question on the test. I am not adding 25 over here. Uh, 25, 25 times, times 25 times this. Oh. And you guys are going to have to help me with that because I don't have that number off the top of my head. Negative 400. Negative 400. Okay. Okay. All right, what am I going to do over here on the left side? I ran out of room. So oh, yeah. Just keep it going. I'm running. Just keep it going. It's okay. Just through the words. Yeah, just keep it going. Because we'll probably skip this one this time. Because, yeah. Okay, what do I do on the left there? You have to foil. You do unfoil. Unfoil. Yep. That's what I, mean. I have to unfoil. Okay, so I have T and T signs. Subtracting minus, and subtracting. Minus, minus, factors of 25 that I had to give you 10. 5 and 5. Okay, now what do I do? I'm going to put it all together. I'm going to move that number back over so that it's H of T. So I have H of, I'm going to come down here to you guys. H of T equals negative 16 T minus 5 squared plus what? Five. Plus 400. Nope. Five. Don't forget the 120 that was already over there, Zach. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Plus 520. Okay, so we took that. We rewrote it in vertex form. Why? Well, first of all, because they told us to. But second of all, so that we could answer C, what is the maximum height and at what time does it occur for the projectile from letter B? 520. Okay, so the max height is 520 feet. At what time does it happen? When? Are we okay? Yeah. All right. At what height does the projectile and B start above the ground? How would we know that? Mm -hmm. How would we know that? When it starts, what is your time? Zero. 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 So if I took this, I wouldn't even take that. If I took this 
and I put in a zero everywhere, what's that first term going to be? Zero. 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 What's the second term going to be? Zero. 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 So zero plus zero plus 120 is? 120. 120 what? Eight. Yeah. It says show how. Okay. That's what I did the first time. We have what? Oh, two more? We got this. Yay. Yay. Matthew, tell a story. No. Five. That means you have to work on Thursday. I can just tell a story. Oh, no. If you keep your mouths closed, you don't have to work on Thursday. You'll have work tomorrow, and you'll have homework to turn in, but then you guys won't have to do anything on Thursday. These guys will work on their spring break package on Thursday. So, shh. No okay. stories. Not okay. story time. And when we're done, I mean, when we're done with all the work. When we're done with all the work, yes. When we're yes. done with all the work, maybe. Yeah, well, it's maybe. not really story time. Oh, no. boy. Oh, God. That's oh, even no. worse. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. At this point, work. I'll take your advice, man. Okay. A square has. Oh, do you guys remember the day I said let's not do this? A square has one side increased in length by two oh, inches, why would I and, an, and an adjacent side decreased in length by two inches. Okay. If the resulting rectangle has oh an area of 60 God. square inches, what is the area of the original square? Okay. This... Never mind. Okay. Uh -huh. This is the day I tried to draw the square, oh. and Leo yelled at me. Yes, yeah. it was a rectangle. Was I here? Okay. Yes, yes, you were here. Okay. So here's my square. My square has all sides of x, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A square has one side increased in length by two inches. Okay, so I'm going to take, and I'm going to increase that by two inches. So this is x plus 2. And an adjacent side decreased in length by two inches. So this is x minus 2. Everybody okay? Sure. The resulting rectangle has an area of 60 square inches. So this guy is 60 square inches. No. I mean, the same size. No. 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 That's what they're saying. Um, oh, perimeter. Perimeter would be the same. Yeah. Yes. What was the area of the original square? So what do I really need to find, you guys? I need to find the area of this, which means I need to find X. X. Which one of these is me finding X? Solve. So is me finding x. Okay, so let's start with area. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Length area length equals length. length times width. Okay, so we know the area. Area is 60. The length is x plus 2. The width is x minus 2. Does it matter? Could I have switched them around? A conjugate pair. A conjugate. It is a conjugate pair. So when I foil them, in our head, we're only going to have... X squared. X squared. Yeah, it's it's so going to be a binomial. X times X is X squared. You can FOIL the whole thing out if you want to, but this is going to be negative 2X, and that's going to be positive 2X. They're going to go away. So then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Okay. Now, in order to solve it, the one side has to say equals 0. So what do I have to do that 60? Minus minus. Minus 6. Same thing. These are technically same signs, yes? Yeah. So I'm going to add them. All right, you guys tell me about that now. It's still a conjugate pair when I go to break it up, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. then you just do the same thing. Okay. So I have... X and X, what are your signs? Minus, plus, and minus. plus and minus. I don't care in which order. How do you get 64? 8 and 8. eight, eight. eight. Okay, we're on our way to solving it, which means we need T-chart. So we end up with two answers. Minus eight eight. We either end up with X equals negative 8, or we end up with X equals 8. But you're talking about a rectangle. So it cannot be this guy. That's one of your erroneous or extraneous? Erroneous. Yes. That's your erroneous root. So 
Look what I just found out. Okay. So that means this is eight. So the area is six. So the area of this. But you just box in your answer. <gasps> because it's not really my answer. I just put it in there. But yeah, I kind of did. But you also box in six. Because they're not really boxed in. They're my drawings. Your eyes are freaking me out right now. They're squares and rectangles. I know. Good Lord, don't worry. She box and she squared it. There you go. And rectangle. And rectangle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, let's get through as much as five here as we possibly can. We can get through it all. Okay, yes, we please. can get through it all. We don't know about all that. Okay, well, let's go to the height. Oh, one of you didn't like this question. I oh, forget yeah, this what it was. Me. Um, blah, 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 blah. X represents the whole. Okay, so this oh, is important. Why? Is the height above the ground in inches? X is the horizontal distance from the left pole in feet. So you got to keep an eye on that. They're two different measurements, okay? This is inches. This is feet. What height is point A above the ground? Okay, how do I figure that out? If this was a parabola and it's on a graph, what is what are they asking me for? For A? No, the starting. A is the starting point, isn't it? How do I find the starting point? Well, well, it goes on forever. Okay. So X is the horizontal distance from the left pole, right? Here's A. Where is it in regards to the left pole? It's Right next to it. It's on it. Yeah. It's connected to the left pole. So how far is it from the left pole? Zero. Okay. So we're going to take that equation and we're going to put in a zero. Like zero equals? Nope. Like the horizontal distance from that left pole is zero. So what is that height? 67 what? Inches. Inches. All right, write the equation in vertex form. Oh, yeah. Don't have nearly enough room for that. Don't you have a whole page? Oh. That's for C and D. Oh, we don't need all that for C and D. You can do it down here. It's okay. Do that. It's all right. We can just do it down here. All right, ready? X squared minus 16X plus 67 equals zero. Walk me through it. Who's telling me my first step? Me, Matthew. Go, Matthew. You. Um, you find the there is no greatest common factor. Matthew, minus what number don't I need? Minus. minus. Wait, wait, wait. Minus. What number don't I need? You don't need 16. I do need 67. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need 67. Okay. Olivia, what do I do with 16? And then? 64? Yes. Can I just plain add 64 over there? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because I didn't do anything fancy to it. I didn't take out a GCF, so it is just 64. Okay. So now I unfoil this lovely thing, and over there I have negative 3. So I have X and X. I have minus and minus, and I have 8 and 8. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm trying to finish this off here. And then C and D. So, write it in vertex form, which means that what information can I pull from here? The turning point is eight. I can pull the turning point. The turning point is eight, three. Okay. If I want to know the distance and the heights from between points A and B, how high is point B? Eight. No. Three. Three. Three inches. Yes. It is three inches. So, what is the difference in the height? 64 inches. 67, which was A. Take away 3, which was B. It's 64 inches. 
what is the horizontal distance that separates points A and C? That's a cable. That's a well, this is zero, right? Yes. How far was B? Eight. eight. And then another eight. And then so this is the middle. This has to be another eight. Sixteen. So they're sixteen. Sixteen what? Oh, no. Feet. No feet. Sixteen feet apart. Whew. We're done. We okay. did. Yeah. Okay, good job. So you watch the video tomorrow. Yes? Yeah. You watch the video tomorrow. You make sure I've seen the homework. Oh, I need your packet from last week so that I can give you credit for the quadratic word problems and something else. Which one is called? It should say three. 15. 15. 315. 322. No, that's this week. Oh, yeah. 322. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna end the Google Meet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. 322, 322, 322. Oh, I guess I can't say my. You, as long as you're actually, just leave it on your desk. Even if your name is on it, I can come over and put it on it. If you leave it on your desk. Okay, if you find it, stop by and drop it off later. What about this?